What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be showing how you can create some jet vapor trails inside of Blender, similar to the effect you saw in our recently uploaded Top Gun Shot recreation project. This is a fairly simple effect to create. Essentially what you need is a particle system to act as fuel for the vapor, and then you're also going to need a domain cube, which will tell Blender how to enclose and the area in which you want the simulation to occur. Now you might think that we would be using the Chaos add-on for this specific tutorial. However, Chaos is best used for creating those explosions and fiery debris fields. And in this case, we don't actually need the advanced Chaos Fire Shader as well. So anyways guys, should be a pretty quick tutorial. Let's get started here. This is going to be the starting point for the tutorial. I just have our jet here. And as you can see, if I zoom out, and select our control. I've just animated it over the course of the timeline here and at about frame 168 is when the jet starts to kind of turn off to the side here, which is where we're going to add those vapor trails because those vapor trails occur when there's more air pressure on the wings themselves in flight. I'm not gonna go into the science behind it because I would probably mess it up, but that's the general concept. So yeah, we're going to be adding a particle system that simulates those vapor trails at around the point in which this jet turns. So let's get started here. So the first thing we're going to do before we actually create our domain cube is create that particle system to drive our vapor. So I'll go ahead and select our jet fuselage here. And you can see I've also attached our camera to move along with our jet. So let's go ahead and select our fuselage here. And we're going to go to our particle properties tab here. And we're going to add a new particle system. And right off the bat, you'll have something like this, which uh, could be a cool effect if you're trying to, you know, create some kind of afterburner heat distortion or something, but we want to adjust it quite a bit. So the first adjustment we want to make for this particle system is when the particles are to start uh, emitting from our jet fuselage. So as I mentioned, we want to do that about as the plane starts to turn here on frame, I'm going to say maybe frame 171. So we'll just scroll over here to our particle settings, change the frame start to 170. And now you can see if I scroll through the beginning part of the simulation, the particles don't exist until this specific moment. And you can actually play around and keyframe with any of these values we're playing with if you want to get the vapor to occur at specific moments or maybe you want kind of a stuttering vapor effect like you see in some other visual effect shots in movies as well. But this is the general concept here. So this is looking pretty good. We don't want the lifetime of this air vapor trail to be this long. We want the air vapor trail to be mostly just around the plane itself. So to do that, the first thing we're going to do is just bring down the lifetime of our fuel particle system. So I'm thinking just bring it down to one frame. And now you can see, let's zoom in here so you can actually see the particle system. You can see the particles here. If you look closely, right, just increase the number of particles to maybe 7,000. So now we can see them a bit better. So you can see the particles are being emitted just for one frame on our entire jet fuselage here, which is uh, pretty much what we want. And I'm also going to play around with the velocity a little bit. You can play around with the velocity settings and this whole panel here to get the particles to be distributed where you want them. So for example, maybe you want these particles to be closer to the camera and kind of on top of the jet here, on top of the cockpit, I mean. So we could actually, I think, increase the object align on the x-axis. Uh, actually, other way. So if we bring this to negative 20, for example, uh, maybe negative just increase it a lot here. All right, so that's actually, oh, it's on the x-axis, my bad. So you can see when I change the object aligned x, it's pushing the particles further this way. I guess we need to adjust the z-axis object aligned. So I'm kind of messing up here. To change it to zero, bring this to 100. See what this gives us. There we go. So now you can see that the particles are being kind of pushed on top of our jet here, which is what we want. Uh, not quite this much though, maybe bring it down to like 26. Go back to viewpoint camera. There we go. 
now it's uh, that's looking a little bit better. I might bring it down a little bit more so it's not quite um, as much there. So maybe I'll do 16. All right, that's looking pretty good. Feel free to play around with this system as it's what's going to drive the initial shape of your vapor trail. You can play around with the randomized setting a bit as well. Maybe bring this up to one, give them a little bit of random variation. You can see if I crank this up a lot, just to give you guys an example, you can see that the particles go a lot crazier here. So they're giving a lot more, there's a lot more random velocity in them. Um, I'm gonna keep it pretty low, maybe 10. Keep it simple. But again, feel free to have some creative freedom with this process. So this is actually looking pretty good. We want to choose a frame to stop emitting the particles. So I'm thinking around frame 195, I'm thinking. So we'll have our particles and our vapor trail occur from 170 to, I see I'm gonna maybe do like 192. So we'll go to the particle setting and emission time here, 192. And now we're going to have 7,000 particles emitted over the course of these 20 frames or so. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Now, one thing we want to do, just because when we simulate this in Mantaflow, once we create these particles as a fuel field, the smoke is going to dissolve, but it doesn't dissolve that quickly, even when we dial in the Mantaflow setting. So in order to get the smoke to be mostly around our jet here and not trail off behind it so much, we wanna make particles be mostly kind of by the start of our kind of interior, I guess, would you call this a wing? This area of our jet right here. So we wanna actually weight paint the distribution of our particle system around this area. So to do that, I'll select our fuselage. I'll go to weight paint then i'll go to our object data properties and add a new vertex group we'll call this jet vapor trail map and then i will make sure our strength is at one weight is at one and then i'll just paint where i want these particles to be emitted from so as i mentioned just kind of want particles to be emitted from this front area so something like this and if you want to take away where you've painted just bring the weight down to zero and you can paint over things as well. I think this should be pretty good. We've now created a vertex group. We'll go back to object mode and I will select the particle system tab again. And then we're going to scroll down here to vertex groups and then we'll change the density vertex group to jet vapor trail map. And now you can see what we're doing here. I'll just go to our camera view again. You can see that the particles are being emitted only on that area of our jet, which is exactly what we want. All right, so I'm pretty happy with our particle system settings. I might randomize the lifetime a little bit just to give a little bit more random look. So I'm just gonna increase the lifetime randomness to one. So some particles will live a little bit longer, but I like this general look. So now what we want to do is add this particle system as a fluid flow object. So I'll select our jet fuselage here with our particle system. I'll go to the physics properties tab. Then I'm going to click on fluid and we're going to change the type here to flow. And then we want the flow type to be smoke. Flow behavior should be inflow. And I'm gonna increase the sampling sub steps to maybe eight. And this is looking good. We wanna change the flow source to our particle system. And then we'll select the particle system we have created here. And I also want to select the initial velocity parameter as well to give the smoke some initial velocity. All right, so this is looking pretty good. I'll go ahead and save our project. The next step we want to take, now that we have created our fuel particle system, it's time to create our domain cube to simulate within. So to do that, we'll just add a cube to our scene at first. So I'll press Shift A. We'll add a mesh cube. And where did our cube go here? It went where our 3D cursor was. So I'll go ahead and just scale it up here, move it back to our scene area, go to wireframe mode. And we wanna make sure that this cube contains the entire area where our particles are being emitted. So we designed our particle system to start emitting at frame 171 and then go all the way to around 192, I think it was. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and go to top view here. I'll just line up our domain and scale it up on the X axis here. And we wanna just place our domain so that it surrounds our jet over the course of time in which those particles are being emitted. Um, so here, all the way to frame 192. We wanna give a little bit of space here for the simulation to occur. Don't want it to be cut. We don't want the smoke to be cut off anywhere. 
So our particles stop around here, which is about when our domain stops. So this should be pretty good. We want to make this large enough to contain our simulation, but no larger than necessary because the larger we make our domain cube, the more voxels we have to add through resolution divisions to get the same amount of detail, which will increase the time we need to bake our simulation. This should be good. I'm going to go with this. I'll go to our physics properties tab here with our cube selected and we'll click on fluid, change the type to domain. So now this is our smoke domain. I'm also going to relabel our cube here. I'll call it vapor trail domain. And I'm going to actually select adaptive domain for a little bit faster result. However, if you get any glitches, I recommend you deselect this, but I didn't get any glitches so far in Blender 3.1. So should be fine. I'm going to bring down the threshold to zero of our adaptive domain. And this is looking pretty good. Now let's scroll down here to our cache data, change the type to modular so we can simulate a little bit easier. Then I'm going to choose where we want to save our simulation data. So I'll go ahead and select this box right here and I will call this jet vapor tutorial cache. Okay select that folder accept and we want to change the start and end frame of our domain cache we don't want to simulate any more than we have to so i'll change the frame start to 171 i'll do 170 just for a good measure and then end it at frame we'll try like 200 so we're simulating for a very short amount of time because we don't need to simulate any longer why add more calculation for the computer um, I want to select the is resumable option so we can actually pause our simulation if we want to and yeah this is looking pretty good and if we do a quick little test bake here go ahead and click on bake data you'll see very quickly that we don't get the result that we want. However, this is a nice way you can test out to make sure your simulation is at least working. You know, generally, we're getting some smoke being emitted from those particles, but it's kind of this globby mess, and that's because we don't have the resolution divisions high enough. Also, before you simulate, I recommend you have a light in your scene, just because the simulation results look better in preview mode. If you don't have a light, I recommend adding it at this point. But anyways, let's adjust these smoke domain settings to get a little bit better result. So the first thing we want to change is our resolution divisions. This is going to be the main parameter that you adjust when you're trying to get different results. Essentially, the more resolution divisions you add, the more voxels are going to be in this domain cube, which are kind of like pixels when you think of like imagery, except for volumes. So I'll go ahead and free the data here. I'm gonna increase the resolution divisions pretty high. For the last video where we did the vapor trails, we had it all the way up at 512. I don't think we're gonna need quite that much because our domain cube is a little bit smaller since we've emitted the particles for a shorter period, but I might do something like 450 just so we get a lot of good detail in it. I'll scroll down here to our dissolve panel. And as I mentioned before, we want the vapor to evaporate very quickly. So in order to do that, I'm going to select the dissolve button here and then I'm going to bring down the time to two frames and this should make our vapor dissolve very quickly and if you want it to dissolve even quicker you can deselect the slow checkbox here however I found that when you have this selected it's a little bit more of a natural look all right so this is looking pretty good we could you know increase the vorticity if we want to maybe 0.5 just so there's a little vorticity in the smoke uh, one thing I want to do before we actually bake our final simulation is select our particle system once more and bake out our particle system so we don't get any glitches in the particle system itself and the smoke is emitting correctly and now I'll select our domain cube here we'll go here and click on bake data and give your computer some time to simulate your original air vapor trails and we have baked our jet vapor trails here and you can see kind of what's happening here the actual particles are emitting the vapor and it's just kind of fading off behind our jet here so this is the general process here if you like you can do a quick viewport render animation but uh, i'm just going to kind of scroll through here and you know it's looking pretty good our vapor is just fading off fairly quickly and then uh, you know when the jet goes out of frame that vapor disappears as well so yeah, this is a pretty nice little sim. You can see that it's still pretty low resolution. So 450 might not have been enough. We might increase that to 512. Or probably what we could do that would be even better is just check the noise checkbox here and then up res it by a factor of one and then bake that noise on top of it. So you could do that. All you need to do to do that is just, again, check the noise checkbox 
up-res it by however much you want. I think one would probably be enough for this. And then you click on bake noise and again, give your computer some time to simulate that noise on top of everything. However, for this specific tutorial, I think it's gonna be enough since in the actual preview, we added so much blur on top of everything that it actually worked out okay. So the next and final step in creating these vapor trails is just adding a very basic volumetric shader for our fluid domain. So go ahead and select your vapor trail domain, go to the shading tab, and I wanna just add a new shader here and we'll call it vapor trails. And we wanna go ahead and get rid of the principled BSDF shader here. And I'll press shift A, go to shader, and then I'm going to use the principled volume shader. Very simple setup here. Gonna take the volume output to the volume input here. And now if we go to rendered view, you can see that we have a nice little vapor trail here. I do have the Hornet enabled as a holdout right now, so go ahead and turn that on for now. Um, but you can see what's occurring here. I might just increase the brightness of that color for the vapor trail. And yeah, this is looking pretty cool here. I might just increase the density a little bit. That's the main parameter we're gonna change here. Maybe five, that looks pretty cool. You know, I might just increase it quite a bit all the way to 10, and then you can always dial it back in your compositor. But yeah, this is the general concept here, guys. Now, depending on how you're compositing your jet or whatever effect you're trying to create, you may want to do what I did and enable your jet as a holdout so that you can render your vapor trails on top of whatever you're trying to render them with and have a little bit more control in that compositing process. But anyways, guys, that is how you can create a vapor trail simulation for either some jets or other flying objects in your scene. And you can apply the simulation techniques in this video to a lot of other effects as well. So I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content and I'll see you next time.